appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Appreciate you in the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. This is episode 53. You follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Special guest in the building for episode 53. Introduce yourself to the audience. What's going on, man? What's up, everybody? It's your boy Sad. Um, also known as H Property Management Owner. You can follow me on Instagram. That's all one word H Property Management LLC. Um, but I'm here to take it with my boy, share some views. So let's get right into it. Copy that. Let's hit the rundown now. Y'all already know the live show is this week, y'all. This weekend is the live show. This weekend is the live show, February 20th at the barn, 6 p.m., 4901 Catherine Street, on the corner of Baltimore Ave. If you're from the city and you know that area, um, you hit the link in my bio on the Eventbrite on any of my pages, and the tickets is there, or you can get me to pull up on you, and I got the physical tickets. However you need, just make sure you get your ass there, and you get your tickets purchased. Um, but that's February 20th, Sunday at the bar. Uh, all right. Now, H2H Cleaning, Tri-State Area Situation is my cleaning company. H2H Cleaning, we are here to help. Whatever you need, plumbing, you need maintenance, you need carpets, you need clean up, clean out, however you need it, we can get it done. Uh, that's only on Instagram, though, at H2H Cleaning. Custom Hustle World, I had to change the name of that page to Custom Hustle World because it's now more than just jerseys. It's jerseys, jackets, and we got the Custom Hustle sweatsuits now. So you get with me for any of your custom needs. I got you. Uh, let's hit the radio rundown. E-Block Radio Network every Monday, 2 o'clock. GFT Radio Network every Tuesday, 2 o'clock. Wednesdays is the kickback at 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. Then we go to Thursdays. Uh, Thursdays is WTNUPhilly.com, 1230. Then we Friday, I Say Podcast Radio Network, 10 a.m. Saturdays, THC Radio Network at 10 a.m. Still trying to lock in a Sunday slot, y'all. We ain't get it there yet, but we working on it. Now, episode 53, fuck, uh, didn't even know, like I say, Valentine's Day was this week or whatever, however that works out. If you know me, you know I'm over life on Valentine's Day. But um, if that's what you went to, you know, shout out to everybody who's celebrating, you know, be safe, wear a condom. <laughs> who, sacrifices more? who sacrifices more in a relationship, though? Is it us or them? Who sacrifices more? We always let the guests go first. Man, so my opinion, bro, I mean, I, I feel like it's a mutual sacrifice. However, the 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 the, the level of sacrifice always changes. You know what I'm saying I feel like in any relationship it should be a mutual sacrifice. Either either person should be able to, you know, put the other person forward before themselves. You feel me? However, you know what I'm saying, as guys, as dudes, it's just a certain certain shit that we gotta be subject to by default. You feel me? Certain responsibilities, certain sacrifices. For an example, you know what I'm saying burglar break into the crib, you laying in the bed with your girl, your you know what I'm saying your, your fiance, your wife, don't matter. You know what I'm saying whatever you consider her, a, 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 a little quick fling, whatever, whatever rule. Copy that. I'm about to say this could be a this could yeah, be a one night, night. This could you be still anything. Gotta be copy. Yeah. <laughs> it's just something. You know what I'm saying so it goes down to that. That burglar come in. Who's giving their life up first? Depending on the type of dude, but nine times out of ten, ten out of ten, that dude gonna step up. He gonna have to. And with these that, new wave that, niggas, these new yeah, wave niggas are six know, out of bro. ten. Yeah, these I'm new wave niggas, niggas are six out of ten. Bro, niggas be sitting in the car letting their girls pump the gas. This shit is all crazy, man. This is terrible. You know what I'm saying? They don't open the doors. You know what I'm saying? I do all that for my girl. You know what I'm saying? She get all that. But nevertheless, so. You know what I'm saying with that being said, that those certain being a being a guy that has to pump the gas, you know what I'm saying, make sure oh the, the, the car break down, let me take that to the mechanic. You know, all of that type of stuff that comes with a you know certain type of sacrifice. You know what I'm saying? That comes with, you know, us get doing a little bit more and you know, requiring a little bit more because we doing that, playing that role. It's just nothing, it's no debate about it. Like there's there's no female that's gonna stand up to a burglar. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Coming in first of all, dude in bed. With the right dude next up, period. With all the right. right dude next up. So you would say then that we all right, so we sacrifice more is what your answer is. The male sacrifices more. Sure. All right. Sure. So uh I talk about what you talk about first before I go into my answer. Um mm -hmm. this is why I be having a problem with the 50 50 
relationships. Well, I ain't got a problem with it. I mean, I don't agree. Not saying I got a problem with it. If that's how you run your situation, I hate by all means, y'all run it. But um, this be my issue with that is when somebody when it's a mouse stuck on a sticky, my wife ain't going down here to go kill this. Nope. Like you said, somebody kicks in the door in the window. My wife ain't going down here with the joint to go handle this. So <laughs> like people always get like bent out of shape these days about relation about gender roles. And it's like, there absolutely are gender roles. There's just certain things that you're not going to do. And there's certain things that I'm not going to do. Something as small as for me, I'm not washing no dishes. We had a dishwasher since I was born. I had one apartment that didn't have a dishwasher and I hated it. And she wasn't my wife then, but like if she wasn't over for a couple days or whatever, guess what? All of the dishes was in the sink. Cause I'm like, I'm not doing these joints. When I was 11, I used to work in my uncle's store and I used to wash dishes in the store. And do you know how many glasses I would break every time I went to work? Because I was terrible at dishwashing. I always hated washing dishes. It was just a thing for me. So you knew getting with me requirement was that I ain't washing shit. I will supply you with all the shit you need to wash these joints, the machine or however you need that situation. But I ain't doing it. Um, So, all right, my answer for this situation would be the woman definitely sacrifices more. If it's the right situation, the woman sacrifices more because she has to sacrifice more of herself because for me, the way things need to go is she got to run the house. She got to be able to take care of the kids. She got to be able to take care of you and she got to be able to take care of the house. This is why I always tell my wife, like, I mean, I understand you got your own pride and you want to work and you pay your bills and all of that type shit copy. But if it's my situation was the way that I wanted, she wouldn't work because I need you to be, I need you to make sure that the house is running smooth, that the kids is cool and that everything is on accord. Like I can't come home and it's dirty. I can't come home and it's clothes piled up everywhere. The homework ain't done and it ain't nothing to eat because you can't tell me all of that stuff is not done because you had to go to work. So you figured that it was more important for you to do something for somebody else's situation or somebody else's company or however that runs versus Mm -hmm. doing it for your own household. (laughs) Like, that's why for me, it's like they got to sacrifice more because they got to sacrifice more of the shit that they, especially these days, the shit that they get and grow up with and the way that the women are being raised now. It's like they get told that you don't need a nigga for nothing, which is a terrible idea to tell a girl. You don't need, you don't need every nigga, but you don't, you don't get a husband and tell him. You don't no, need you don't, This be the problem. People get married these days and say, I don't need a nigga for shit. This is your husband. Your mom, cousin, sister, or whoever told you that wasn't talking about when you get married and have a good nigga who's trying to take care of you and his family right. that you argue right. with this man about who's paying the cable bill. <laughs> That's not what she was talking about. What she was it's, telling it's, you is why you out here in the mix and in the streets is don't get caught up and dependent on these niggas. Like, it's a totally different situation. Go ahead. Always. I want to say, just piggyback off of that, like, you know, you, you, you don't you don't need certain qualities. You know what I'm saying? You don't need certain toxic or, you know, leech qualities from, you know, uh, a nigga. You know what I'm saying? Or vice versa. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't be too independent where you you ain't dependent. You feel me? You can't be. There's no way to get anywhere in the world by yourself. You have to. You have to. And when you, you know, you not sign up, but when you agree to be in a relationship where you're dealing with somebody emotionally, physically, sexually, all of that stuff, you know what I'm saying? There's just certain sacrifices that, you know, you're going to have to make. It's just depending on... The, the setup is the worth the worth it you know what i'm saying like oh yeah i will be doing the dishes and doing all that stuff you know what i'm saying wife don't have a no problem doing that if you handle the business but you just home playing a game just goofball ain't got it on your you know what i'm saying not trying to make stuff happen it's like what and you want this and you want that and vice versa for a dude it's like i'm not getting up you know what i'm saying first thing in the morning to warm the car for you to just go to the nail salon just because you just like a waste, you know what I'm saying? You want to just do all this stuff? I'm like, no, I want, I want to, I want, a, I want work. You feel me? I want to sacrifice and know that what I'm sacrificing for is work. You feel me? Whatever that may be. You know what I'm saying? So I definitely, I, see, I, again, that's talk, I agree with both sides. But, see, yeah, when we talk about like, I mean, we both sacrificing. Let's not demean it. I don't mean to say that again. This is the last two episodes, it's kind of touching on similar topics, but not the same. Uh, Cause you hit them from different different aspects, but 
I don't want to demean or belittle the sacrifices that I make personally, or none of us make oh, yeah, as a man. No problem, no problem, no problem. If you handling your shit the right way, yeah, you supposed to. Be, you're supposed to get the fuck up early. It's supposed to be cold and dark and hard for you to all do this that shit. shit. All you that signed shit. up for all of that when you grew up with a dick, shit. okay? <laughs> like, when you not did that, inevitable. That's what I'm saying. Like when you grew, when you grow up as a male, like. And you want to have a family and you want somebody to submit to the shit that you're saying, there's a certain level and certain shit that you have to be supplying and doing for the woman to submit to you. Like, shout out to Glow. I'm listening to her podcast and she was talking about, like, if the dude ain't doing shit, what is it that I'm submitting to? Like you saying, if the nigga sitting in the house playing mad and all that, what the fuck are you submitting to? How do you expect to be uh, obeyed, like, and all of that when right. you're not supplying anything to for us to look to, for us to aspire to. Like, you're not making sure that everything is taken care of for us. You just right. sitting in here on your ass expecting to be catered to because you got a dick. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Everybody with a dick ain't a man. <laughs> right. Everybody with a pussy ain't a woman. This is just the bottom line. Like, all those are our body parts. It's your actions, your mentality, and the way that you look at things, the way that the person that you are determines do you really carry that title or not. And those yeah. are the things that we always get confused in these situations. Is just because that nigga's forty five don't mean that that nigga's a man. No, he ain't a man, no, he's just a grown male. That's it, a grown male. Nah, your birthday, your birthday, your birthday is gonna keep coming every year. You don't have to get for any sure. smarter, for better, sure. or anything. Like that's what that is. Stuck in your ways, you still got you know childlike tendencies. You still a little boy. That's just it. Simple as that. See, plus another reason why I went with this as far as like that the woman sacrifices more is because when she has the baby. She's literally risking her life to have this baby. Oh yeah, no, no, outside, no, no. outside of, excuse me, she got this health complication. She got any of those type of situations. Just the physical toll that it takes on her body to have a human being moving around in it, and like if you get a C-section, they literally taking your shit out to get the baby out and all. Like you know what I'm saying, this is why I say after they go through all of that, then. You still got to come home and now you sleep the problem and you still got to do everything else, though, too. Yeah. This is how relationships always fall apart after those situations is because then you go from the nigga matters until you're not even paying attention to the man anymore. Right. right. Like, so then the sacrifices that you're making get to be overlooked. And now it's like, I don't need a pat on my back for paying an electric bill, but shit, it would be nice to get a rub every now and again. A you know what I'm saying? Saying, yeah. yeah, it's like you don't See, get I... this gold star for doing your job, but at the same time, for both of us, we want to mm -hmm. know that you know that I'm doing this shit. Right. Like she want to say, like, damn, you could have took care of the homework tonight or whatever. You had a light day at work and you was here. That don't mean you just get to sit here and chill and do nothing now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, all right, take a little bit of this off of her. The same thing on the other aspect. If you know this nigga just had six hard days, like, don't then let me walk in the door and you want some dumb shit. Like, don't be, demean and belittle these sacrifices that I am making. Because sure. we got to sacrifice sure. so much time away from the kids just because once we have them, it'd be like, I got to get it. I got to get it. I got to get it because you got You need this shit to take care of them. Right. Uh-uh. I, I, I guess I wasn't so stern. You know what I'm saying we, you know, you asked me the one job. I'm not so stern and stuck on. That's why I started off like giving, you know, uh, props to both sides. You know what I'm saying I'm a firm believer. Like you know, shit being equal, equal don't mean like monetary. Like, oh, the bills come to two grand. That that don't mean equality. If equal mean that when I'm giving something, you giving something. You feel me? Give and take on what you know what I'm saying on every aspect. You know what I'm saying to words though, you know. Because that is a different piece. These guys that work around, oh, you know, women, this one. No, women have it hard, bro. They, they really, really do. You feel me? I don't have no kids. But, you know, we definitely was, you know, niggas was raised, you feel me? So you definitely could put it together as far as how it is, running a household and everything, you know. And I'm the older brother, so I got a, you know, a sense of it. However, I don't have none that's mine. I never had to deal with childbirth and the relationship after that with the woman. Like, I, I've never had to, you feel me? However. A whole different relationship after that. I know. You know what I'm saying? I I, I, can, I, can, I I see, I hear, you feel me? But what I can say is from, you know, just being in a, being in a committed relationship for, you know, shit, we've been like seven years, six, seven years, you know what I'm saying? Being in a committed relationship with no children, you know what I'm saying? It's, you know, we rock, we was together young, beginning, we, you know, she been with me for a minute, you feel me? So we, 
got it. We, we had time to watch each other grow. You feel me? And to piggyback on a on a a non mother, you feel me? You know that sacrifice they make. They really gotta take a step back, sacrifice, and say, "Damn, I believe that this guy going. You know, I'm not gonna ride him. I'm gonna take. You know, take the how can I say? It? Take the passenger route and believe that this car is gonna get to that de- destination. That's a different type of sacrifice when you know you can drive a car yourself. You know what I'm saying? That's that's a yep. type like you get you get what I'm saying. So that's a that's a different beast in itself that most guys we don't like. Even me, I would say like at times I didn't even understand that shit. Like damn, like you so pressed to be the man, be the man. Da da da. da. It's like yo, make sure you do what you're supposed to do. But also remember me submitting is me trusting you. My submission is trusting you that oh, trusting you that you're gonna lead the pack the right way. You're not gonna be on the bullshit. You're not gonna have an inconsistent. You know what I'm saying? Inconsistent day. Everything is going to be taken care of. And it's just like, sadly, in our communities, you know, if inconsistency is, 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 is it, it trumps everything, man. It's bad. Like, that's why girls are saying, like, I'm so independent because they, you know, they get with a dude or they, they've seen somebody that just be inconsistent. They can't trust a nigga to drive a car to get it from A to B. You know what I'm saying? That's why they so, it, nope, not me. They seen their mom. They seen their aunt. They seen their grandma. You feel me? They like no, right. not me. So see, this be the this be the problem in them situations. Mm-hmm. Like, I, does the dude have the right tools to drive the car? Mm. Everybody, some dudes are not meant to drive the car. Mm. Like, there are some stronger women who will be better equipped to drive this car and to lead That's this crazy. family. That's crazy. So, That's this is crazy the problem, hear, though, bro. Because the problem is honesty starts in the mirror. You got to make a strong evaluation of yourself when you go out here before you start creating other people. And now you got a whole family and a structure and a dynamic where people are looking at you. Are you even equipped to be the person for us to look at? You know what I'm saying? Like, those are the kind of situations and things that you need to think about before you start getting in relationships. You need to find out what type of woman would be good for you. Just because, like, it's always perceived as a stronger or a weaker woman. People always perceive the woman who knows how to be submissive as weak. I think the strength comes in a person that can expose the it can expose themselves to more vulnerability makes them a stronger person. Mm-hmm. Like that was an episode I did shout out to my man Tokyo. We did that shit, top like the first 10 episodes, I believe, of the podcast where mm-hmm. you got to be strong enough to be weak. If you're the type of woman who's always having to driven drive the car and now you got with a man who's like he can do it and he's showing you this, then don't treat him like the same nigga who was the nice nigga before. Don't demean me and put me in a situation that I ain't got nothing to do with. Right. Like, we can't both drive. We get in this no, front seat I, I, one steering wheel. So I like I, I totally agree with what you said, uh, as far as the relationship being 50-50. Our relationships are all are all 50-50. Mm-hmm. And the whole people thing with just, the 50 50 is people go, instantly people go, go to money. money. That's it. Just like That's you just said, the bill, like, when you say 50 50, most people go, Well, I got my stack. Where is yours? Or yeah. niggas will go, yeah. Niggas right. will go, I'm so I'm supposed to pay the two stacks and she ain't doing nothing. She just fucking the money up. If you're in a situation, I can continue to say this on the podcast. Right. Nobody should be in a situation with a kind of girl who, if you spend in the two stacks and she's not she, spending anything, she's supposed to be the savings account. She's supposed to have everything tucked so that when right, something bro. goes something wrong, wrong, I'm good. This is when we this good. is what your girl holding you down means. It means when something goes wrong, she can hold this down. Not when something goes wrong, it's four flat tires. Like you just said, you had a hot water heater bus or some shit. When you got one of these different situations, your girl needs to be able to handle that. Like, if she's not paying anything, she should be able to, to handle this because that's what her role is here. This is how my girl is holding me down. My girl holding me down ain't I'm living off of her. My girl holding me down ain't she pays all the bills. You know what I'm saying? And I just bust her down at the end of the night. Like, that's not your girl holding you down. That's your right. girl taking care of you. Taking care of you. <laughs> right. And it's not going to be the at same. At that point, you become a dependent. She, <laughs> right. Because, and then in addition to that, you ain't really give her the opportunity to be taken care of, too. You know what I'm saying? You ain't give her that at all from the door or before or after. You know what I'm saying? It's just like you, you definitely got to make it worthwhile. Make that woman be like, damn, like he definitely been, you know, every time the car went flat, he been taking care of it. Every time shit hit the fan, he been right there. I could definitely do this part. You know what I'm saying? Like, I got this one. You know what I'm saying? Move over. I got this one. Don't worry about this. That's the type of when it go down to the, the bills being two bands, 
niggas not. No, you ain't touching shit. I got this. Don't worry about it. Be good. See, that's what I'm saying. At these times, I can understand, like, all right, the shit 2000. We just using this as a raw number, y'all. It's not really a number. Uh, All right, I'll take, I can take 15, you take five. Because I know you got your own pride and you're going to want to feel like you contributing and all of that. Because this is always a thing like me and my wife would talk about. And I'd be like, the, you contributing is you making sure all of this other shit is handled. Like, I don't that's, need you to worry about Pico. Right. I don't need you to worry about none of that's that. Like, I, Yeah, I want you to be worrying about is the kids on a, even accord. Like, is they learning what the fuck they need to learn and all of that type shit. Is the house being ran and the build? Like, is everything cool in here? That's what I need you to be worrying about. I don't need you to be worrying about how much is Comcast on our ass for this month. Like, yeah. I'll take care of that. But, I mean, like I said, just those things all go back into, like you said, the whole conversation is about the sacrifice. And right. once, again, like I said, you said y'all ain't got no kids. I'm telling you, once them kids come, this is a new Keisha. Oh, wow. All right? So, <laughs> right, so, be so completely what, prepared to understand and see, like, oh, she ain't her at all. She is not that girl you met. So question, right? Question, right? So with this question, we go with this, right? So the topic is, you know, who take more of the sacrifice, male or female in a relationship, right? Now, even with that, we're going to take it a step, take it a, take it a notch up, right? Is that something, is that learned behavior or is that, you know, and when I say learned behavior, is that learned behavior from upbringing? Or is that learned behavior from trial and error from, you know, with that person or with, you know, the previous, you feel me? I'm saying because it's a little bit of both mm-hmm. because uh, this is, again, this is similar to last week's episode, which y'all gonna hear both of these. So you'll get it. Um, a lot of things are the way we brought up. If you brought up in a single parent household where your mom, or your dad always had different chicks around, your mom had different dudes around. That's what's mm-hmm. normal to you. So in your mind, it doesn't look normal for you to be in like a healthy relationship because you, this is not what you ever saw. If you always saw arguing and toxicity, you're going to lean mm-hmm. towards that. You're going to be that type. <clears throat> or you get the person who just because I saw this, I'm going in a 180 degree angle to get away from that because I know I didn't right. like it when I was the seven year old watching my mom go through it, watching my dad go through it. So it's one of those things where it's like it could be uh, the way you grew up. Or are you growing and evolving in that situation? Are you changing, not even changing with the times? Are you as an adult, as a young teen to a young 20s to a mid to a 30s? Like, how do you start to view the world? Do you start to see like the way that I grew up wasn't the right way? The way Mm -hmm. that I'm going about this ain't the right way. It's all about those evaluations of yourself and your situation. Like I said, again, honesty starts in that mirror. And you got to be able to keep it real with yourself in that mirror. Am I the type of person who's caring enough to have kids? Am I the type of person caring enough to take care of a man or take care of a woman or show a daughter how to love a man or show my son how to treat a woman? Like you got to make those evaluations and assessments of yourself before you start having these kids. Because once you start having these kids, like I said, now it's just chaos. It's a windmill. You look up and it's four years later, six years later, and you end up in a situation where you and her don't even know if y'all even compatible no more. Y'all might just be co-parents at this point. And you don't even know that that happened. And it's all because it's just, we stopped growing. You know what I'm saying? Definitely got to keep growing. It's, you you know, got to be level. communicating and y'all got to be making sure that we pushing towards the same shit. Yeah. All right. Now we're going to switch it up a little bit. Uh, Now we're going to talk about you and what you got going on. Oh, man. So break down. Break down. Break down. Uh, going on, man. Okay. Well, let, let the audience know. You know what I'm saying? Oh, man. So what we got going on, and this is all from a humble tongue, you feel me? Uh, I've been in business. It's not. This my- is one of the things I always tell people, bro. It ain't bragging if it's the truth. If I mm. if I got to explain to you what my situation is, it's not me bragging. It's me telling you what it is. <laughs> but you know what? That comes from our community, man. We so fucking programmed to where though you can't even tell the truth without it seeming like you fucking bragging. Oh, that's crazy. It's really crazy. I'm just, you know what I mean? That's how I, I got to put the disclaimer on. Hey, yo, I'm humble. <laughs> that's how I start. You feel me? That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm telling niggas. If I'm telling you about six radio stations, it's not because I'm bragging. It's because I'm on six radio stations. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, that's Let's a fact. Get it. Let's get it. Go ahead. Go so ahead. You got the fact. For fact, this is my third year in business. You know what I'm saying? I'm a general contractor. I specialize in painting, roofing, sheetrock, finishing, flooring. Anything else, I got a team for that. 
my team, we handle all the systems. You know what I'm saying when it comes down to plumbing, electrical, uh, HVAC, it doesn't matter. You know, uh, we do interior, exterior work. All right, Mike's in the short. Um, in addition to that, uh, I'm the carpentry instructor for the Philadelphia Mural Arts Restorative Justice Program. I've been doing that for about a little over a year. And I'm also the carpentry instructor for the NOMO Foundation. Um, that's new, op, new, new, op, uh, I always mess it up. New options, more opportunities. Um, and these, both of these programs are offered, they're free. They're in the city, you know, they cater to, you know, the adults and they cater to the kids, you know, and, 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 you know, I team up with both of these organizations to bring my carpentry skill set. So, you know, I've done work at FDR Park. Uh, I know everybody's familiar. They just had the councilwoman robbed there, but I did some work in that clubhouse, turned that whole building over. Uh, Man Young Bridge, you robbed past there. That's a mural that I, you know, was a part of. Uh, uh, right now, we're making a recording studio. You know, that's about 80 percent. We just got another building in South Philly, about to turn that over so they can have, you know, make that into another teaching area, another community center. Um, so I'm just doing a lot, man. In addition to that, you know, I got a book that I, that I need to, to, to drop, but you know, I'm a, I'm an author, I'm a uh, motiv motivational type dude. Like uh, I'm just everything, man. I'm just trying to make it happen. You know, not even a motivational type dude, but just somebody that's just willing to get at, give the game up. You know what I'm saying I ain't stingy. So I would just say I'm just a genuine dude in the city, just making it happen. You know what I'm saying so. How did you get yourself tied in with all these different situations? Sounding like hype. <laughs> Uh, ha, 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 ha. I mean, shit. It just felt is what it is is putting it, being being consistent. You know what I'm saying being consistent in whatever you're doing, and that means that somebody gonna see. You know what I'm saying when you got things lined up, set up, you know, and you're doing things legit. You know, people gonna call you, call your line. So I say that to say, like, if you're doing something wrong, you know, you got everybody know you for you know having the gas, having you know. Whatever it may be, you know what I'm saying the pills, whatever you know what I'm saying they're gonna call you. So I said that the same one when they knew that I'm teaching. I mean, they knew that I'm I'm a genuine dude. They know I got the skill set. They know I'm not slimy. They know that uh, you know I, I know my stuff. They said, "Well, damn, this opportunity came by. I got this young. I got this opportunity down here in the city. I know this young brother. I've been watching him for years. He's been doing everything folks to do. He never on goofy time. Let me see what he, you know. Let me see if he will take this contract. So let the listeners head, know how old you is, bro. 30 ball, 30, 30 years old, man. The reason why you throw that is because I want to, the reason why I should throw your age in there is the reason why I ain't said a word because I wanted you, one, I know these things where we had this conversation and I felt like this is something that we need to get out there and let people know what's going on. Two, I feel like if you that young and doing it, that I want that thing to inspire somebody else to see that they could do it too. This For is sure. the reason why I go through that long ass rundown in the beginning of every episode and I like again, I tell people all the time, shit ain't bragging when it's true. I'm doing that because I want to motivate you to do it. I want mm -hmm. you to tell me about the seven stations that you mm -hmm. got or the two mm -hmm. stations you got or three. I want you to be able to inspire somebody else to do some better shit than what somebody like you know than what is out there. I'm For not sure. in a competition with nobody because can't nobody run it like me. Can't nope. nobody I can't run it like nobody else. So I look at nothing or nobody as competition. I just look at it like, okay, if that's what you set the mark at, then that's what we aiming for. But I'm not saying it or doing it on a malicious shit or on a dumb shit. And that's why I got that rundown the way that it is. That's why I let you have it. Go ahead. You got the floor. Run it all down. Let niggas know what it is. And let people see, again, you could be young. Nigga ain't got no kids. And niggas all about business and trying to make things happen and trying to make that's shit go from the community and trying to I'm teach. I'm in the work truck right now. I'm in, the, I'm in my second office right now. I'm in the work truck right now, bro. I wanted to be at the office talking to you so you can see the little, you mean? But that'll be for the next episode. But definitely, Copy you that. know, just making it happen. Making it happen, man. Like, you know, we definitely talk off, off record, but, you know, we ain't talking about nothing that your listeners ain't here. You know what I'm saying? You've been saying the same preach. You know what I'm saying? Purity as far as, you know, being consistent, doing the right thing, and always grinding and hustling, man. That's just the name of the game. Like, if you're not grinding and hustling the right way, man, you're just wasting your time because, even if you trap, even if you're doing the wrong thing and you grind a hustling, that's not going to last. You feel me? And then you're going to have to start doing something that's going to be long, that's going to have longevity. That's just what it is, man. 
Whatever you doing, don't waste something time. that you could pass off to them. You going to have something to pass off to your kids. Like, yeah, you can't. I mean, you you you, you can you can you can sneak on you know sneak through those cracks as much as you want to, but somewhere you're gonna have to walk through a door. You feel me? With and they're gonna see you. And if you got stains on you, you got holes on you. If the holes in you, it's over. That you're gonna be exposed. It's over with. You know what I'm saying, Miles, just carry it the right way, be legit, and just move. And just move with purity, man. Copy that though, bro. I appreciate you coming on episode fifty three. Let the listeners know where to follow you at before we close this one out. Um, man, Mickey underscore sixteen hundred Instagram, uh, H Property Management LLC, um, HPM dot com. That's H as a Harry Paul Mary Phila P H I L A dot com. Um, if you need any work from the top of the house to the bottom to the front to back of the house, call us. Life is short. Copy that. All that information will be in the description of the episode. That was episode 53, y'all. Yo, the live show is this weekend, y'all. Go grab the tickets right now. We are out. Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H-Y-M-P-E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up.